Hello, my name is Mark Taylor and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. The place for creative and inspiring learning from around the world. Listen to teachers, parents and mentors share how they are supporting children to live their best authentic life and are proving to be a guiding light to us all. Hello and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. My name is Mark Taylor. If you're a new listener, thank you so much for joining us. I know we've had more and more and more people joining over the last few weeks. It's been an incredible journey and and I hope that we're giving you as much incredible information and inspiration and creativity as we possibly can. Now, this is a bonus episode of a previously released Learning on Fire podcast. One of the things that's important to me is understanding that learning isn't just about what happens in school and about curriculum, but some of the wider things that people who've been very successful in their life have learned and would like to share with the rest of the world. Now, my guest on this episode was Dr. Mark T. Wade, and he has two doctorates. He's built a very successful brick and mortar clinic and also has a multi-million dollar online business. And some of the incredible learning that he's had that he's sharing with us on this podcast, I think is important for us all to be aware of in the fact that he's been able to share that and learn with this journey with his son as well, I think really just sort of makes it hit home in terms of the sorts of things which are really important for being successful, but also understanding how that all fits in with our life as a whole. Now, you can become more involved with Education on Fire. If you sign up to the newsletter at educationonfire.com, you can get the chance to download a free top 10 resources from us, but also gives you access to our Education on Fire private Facebook group. And it's in there that we have more conversations about some of the episodes that we released and some of the themes and some of the new programs and exciting things that we're working on in the coming months. And I hope you enjoy this. This is a previously released Learning on Fire podcast from Dr. Mark T. Wade. There comes a time in every person's life when you realise it's not about doing what you are told, but doing what you know is right for you. Let us take a journey of learning and discovery with the world's most successful people who are living the life of their dreams, walking through life using their inner wisdom and being of service to others. Forget exams, grades and test scores. What is your purpose? As we let go of what we think should be and learn from our elders to gain knowledge, inspiration, and a true sense of who we are. What are your dreams? Does your life have meaning? Are you living a life of significance? Let's talk with today's guest. Hello and welcome as we spend some more time together on the Learning on Fire podcast. Today I'm talking to Dr. Mark T. Wade. Hi Mark, thanks for joining me and let's explore the journey of who you are. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. We got two Marks on here. This is this, we're going to try and keep that uh, separated. But yeah, absolutely. I'm super excited to be here and uh, ready to, to, to tell your listeners about the amazing opportunities that they can get through education. Fantastic. So let's start with a little bit about um, your, your current background and, and the sorts of things that you're into at the moment. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So my background, it's very interesting, actually, um, and it's been a windy little journey. Uh, so we'll, we'll take it more from my professional, like after after college. So I actually have I have two doctorates. Um, I, I have two bachelors as well. I have a, a, a clinical doctorate in chiropractic and an academic doctorate in public health. Uh, and I also have a little over 40 certifications in things such as posture and neurology and ergonomics and human function. Uh, I founded the, I co-founded the American Posture Institute, uh, which is a, uh, the world's largest resource for postgraduate online posture uh, information. And then I also have a couple other companies and in, in organizations or associations, both in the health space, also in kind of the entrepreneur space. Um, I also am uh, a veteran of the United States. I um, had that journey as well. So I've been a little bit of everywhere and I've also am a world traveler, uh, very much an adventurer by heart. Um, I lived in Italy for about six years. I also lived in Croatia for a little bit and I'm now currently located in beautiful paradise, Puerto Rico. That's amazing. It, it really, that kind of I love the European travel, obviously being based here in the UK, it sort of, it always just feels like it's just a short hop <laughs> just across the channel for us. But it's, it's quite a big thing um, in terms of going from the States. So how, how did you end up in Italy and why was that a place you spent the whole for six years? 
Yeah, um, and you're right. I I dearly miss that. Um, even the Ryanair, right? The two hour flights, you just <laughs> yeah. hop on. You're in another country. I, I took took very much took advantage of that while I was there, and I miss it a lot. Uh, and spent a, a lot of time in the UK as well. It's beautiful, beautiful place. We were talking just previously about Bath over there. I loved that. Also saw Stonehenge, and so um, yeah. When I graduated with my first doctorate, I I knew I wanted to go abroad. I was a part of an organization during my my, my doctorate called the the World Congress for Chiropractic Students, and that um, really opened up my horizons and my eyes to the possibility that I didn't have to stay right there in, in the United States, that I could essentially go anywhere I wanted um, because we had several different congresses over the course of those four years, and they were located in all kinds of different countries, such as Rio de Janeiro, New Zealand, uh, I think one was in Mexico, et cetera. So when I graduated, I knew I wanted to go abroad, but I really didn't know where I wanted to go. So me and my partner who she had studied abroad during undergrad in Italy, uh, she was raving about how beautiful it was, how amazing it was. And so that's why we went to Italy. Now it was only supposed to be for, you know, one to two years, but once we got there, it was just so beautiful. It always became, well, you know, we'll go back next year. Both our clinic, which became one of the most successful posture correction clinics in the country, and then we had an online business. The American Posture Institute um, had expanded so much that we had to go ahead and make that trip back to the United States to be kind of closer to our target demographics. And so from such a, a broad kind of traveling experience at that kind of age, I mean, how, how does your life look now compared to what it was like when you were growing up? Well, when I was growing up, you know, I grew up middle class, Midwestern, Missouri boy, uh, hardworking, sports, you know, I, school was always a focus for me. But I was always because I was always very determined on my my goal or my dream, which was to become a doctor. Now, that uh, idea of doctor had ch it changed throughout the course of my uh, of growing up. Like at one point I wanted to be a neurosurgeon. I shadowed a neurosurgeon, um, for six years through high school and then college. And I loved it. It was fascinating, but I originally, I eventually decided that's not like the lifestyle I wanted. Um, but when I was growing up, like I never had, I guess I, I never knew what would be, what, what, what was even possible. I guess I just knew I wanted to accomplish that goal. Now, now that I'm at this point, I realize, I mean, that drive and that journey has opened me up to a life, a lifestyle and a way of living that um, is, is something very incredible. And I'm truly blessed to be able to have it. So, yeah, uh, really, really such a, a great story and, and, a, and a great journey just to be able you can sort of almost pitch yourself as you start to sort of see those ideas of what you really wanted to go for. And then, like I said, with, the, with your travel and how you've managed to sort of work your way around the world as well, it's such a sort of hear the people listening going oh wow I can just expand into this whole world which is out there rather than just sort of my sort of four small walls of the school or, or you know my small town or wherever it is that you're actually listening to at the moment so I would also say with that uh, on your on the tail code of that is don't don't limit yourself like set your goals high um, as inspire and aspire to reach those goals and just know that anything's possible like if I would have just kind of followed the traditional uh, prof like for my profession, the professional route, I would have been stuck inside of a clinic, you know, my entire life. I wouldn't have had the free, or if we even taken a step back, if I would have followed what everyone, you know, 99% of the other, you know, my colleagues did after they graduated, I would have never left my own town. Yeah. So just anything's possible, especially if you set your mind to it. Yeah. And just and just like I say, opening that up just as a possibility. And then you've got somewhere to walk into, haven't you? Otherwise, you you are just very closed off to any possibilities. What was valuable about your school experience? Was something which you really took away as a really important lesson? Yeah, absolutely. For me, um, I was very much sports oriented. But what I would say what was valuable for me is I did not just do one thing. I, it's kind of a part of my personality, but I like to sample a lot of different things. So although sports were a heavy focus of me, 
of mine, academics were also top priority for me. But I also did other things. I was in advanced choir, you know, I was in a, uh, a couple other clubs or activities. I didn't let myself just follow, fall into one rut or one path, I guess, if you will. And I can also relate this, you know, to, to having now lived abroad, uh, in several different places throughout Europe is if you just stay in one area or one path or just do one thing, you're around the same people all the time. And that doesn't really expand your mind or expand uh, what's possible. The more different experiences you have and the more different people you meet that are different than you, the more it kind of opens your eyes to what is possible and increases the opportunity to do things that are amazing that you may have never thought of before. So, so one of the most valuable things for me during um, you know, my childhood school experience was not just doing the one thing I was good at or the, the, you know, the one thing that I liked the most, but trying to be involved in more things, even things that challenged me that were a little outside of my comfort zone. Those were typically some of the most rewarding things that I experienced as well. I think that's really important, and and just to go, but sort of one step further with that, you know, these days, you know, with the curriculum being quite closed and, and a lot of focus on maths and English and science, um, there are still lots of things going on in schools, even if they're after school clubs or they're just extra things which are around. And it's, I would sort of think of the analogy of kind of food. You know, it's sort of we've got children here at home, and it's like, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that, but I, I sort of say. But when was the last time you tried it? You know, as a child, I never used to like mushrooms, but actually as an adult, I love them. And it's just that kind of when the opportunities are there, just go back and have another try or just see a, a different way of doing it. And like you said, that expansion and those experiences then can change as you go through your school life, as well as just being a one off opportunity. Such a good point. Yes. Which teachers do you remember and why? You know, was, was there a certain teacher that connected with you in a certain way or, or something they said which sort of stuck with you, which really gave you some sort of focus on how you wanted to progress with your life? Well, with this one, I'm going to be referring uh, with this question, referring specifically to my first doctorate program, because that's where I met uh, some of the teachers that am, impacted me the most. You, you, you have to keep in mind, I've done, I've been in school for probably 30, you know, 32 <laughs> years. So uh, when it comes to teachers, I've had a lot of them and I've had a lot of great ones too. And what I tend to find, this is, you know, just as little side tip or side step maybe, is that all teachers are great teachers. If you're having an interaction, and this is what I, I tell with tell my son too, every time he starts a school year, he needs to look at that teacher as a teammate. And one of the best things that we've done is every every time he starts with that teacher, he lets that teacher know his goals and what he's trying to accomplish. So instead of just a student who's either trying to get an A or a B, they look at him as a student who's trying to get into MIT and who's open to feedback and um, instructions. So it makes it much more like the teacher is a part of your team that's on your side versus – teacher and student. So the reason I bring that up is because one of the teachers that I um, remember that stood out to me the most, he, he was also the president of the call of the 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 school I was at. His name is Dr. Carl Cleveland the third. And he was just uh, one of, he was one of the most hardworking person I've ever met, but he had this legacy, this grace, um, and he honestly cared about everyone. Like he he remembered, I think at the beginning of every new try, like n new class that came in, uh, he would go. They would have this session where he would come in and he would introduce himself, do a little talk, and he would go through. And they would all, everybody would say their name. And typically, you know, the size, student size, a class size at that point would be like thirty to forty people. And then at the end, he would go back and repeat each name of every single student. And then if you saw him in the the hall, he remembered your name. It was just. That attention, that that the, the showing that he cared, even though at that time for me he was in such a high position and he cared about me, some just little student running through the hall, right? Mm -hmm. So that really made an impact on me. Yeah, it's it's knowing the story, isn't it? And it's and it's knowing the person enough to really take an interest. And I, th I think how you put it is absolutely perfect. It's not about getting an A or a B. It's about 
enabling you to get where you want to go, whatever that happens to be. And and that's a little bit of a two way street. You have to be open enough to actually have those dialogues and to make that your mission to make sure they know who you are, as well as just sort of sitting back. So I guess that's a that's a really good thing to take away in terms of just being open to be yourself and and and, and allow this two way conversation to go on. Because as, as you mentioned before, you know, being a team is 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 such a better way of working than it being just a question of knowledge input. So that's I think it's a great advice there. Well, yeah, like, I mean, you got to think about it. Teachers are people, right? They're human. They're yeah. people. Like, they have the same feelings as you and me, and they, they want you to do well. And it helps, I mean, as human beings, we care more about people that we connect with. I mean, it's just a part of it. So if you can connect with your teacher and not in one of those, you know, like brown nosing ways where you're just kind of like sucking up or whatever, but like letting them know like where you're trying to go with your goals and saying, look, like I really am dedicated to making these. So if I can do anything different or you see like I'm starting to fall off the path or there's a, something I should be doing different, please tell me. And they will respect that and, and honor that so much more. And it's just something again, like with my son that he's done that it's 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 really changed the dynamic from that teacher student relationship to teammates and it makes all the difference yeah that, that makes so much sense i can i can really really see that um who did you admire when you were when you were young and and what was it about that person that had a, a real impact on your life well i'd have to say with this i kind of kept it i you know my thought instantly goes a little bit more broad you know when I admire like when I was a student when I was young um, obviously my father I, I truly admired my father but when from a more broader standpoint at that point because I was fixated on it I really admired and looked up to doctors and politicians a little less now doctor or a little less now the politicians but uh you know the do like doctors i had such a, a profound respect for because they were a living example of the aspirational identity that i wanted to become and accomplish um so anytime i could be around any of them and essentially uh, specifically the one i was shadowing for six years in in school they just left a lasting impression and, and it was the ability like for me at that time, the reason they had an – like the, the doctors that I was around had an impact on me is because I could see like what they were able to do. Like they could help people. They had this respect because they put in the hard work that most people weren't willing or able to do to get to where they were. And then at the same time, they had this amazing lifestyle for their families. So it was just a combination of all of that uh, put together. Yeah, and is there anyone now that you admire, or anyone else you, you sort of see on the current sort of world stage that you just think actually there's something about them which is a really fantastic thing to try and not necessarily emulate, but just someone you can really see sort of supporting the world to to be the best sort of community that we're in. Again, my, my first thought, my first thought would go back to my father. I mean, he, mainly because he's helped me and in, in you know throughout my journey in ways that like you know, no one else would, but I guess we would expect that of most of our fathers. Mm -hmm. Um, other than that, I would probably have to say there is, uh, a friend of mine who is a, a pretty big influencer in the entrepreneur space. His name is Pete Vargas, the third. And, um, in this space, he helps, he helps entrepreneurs or anybody essentially with a message that they want to get out to the world. He helps them win stages. So he helps them get on, on these stages to speak to, to groups, to, to organizations, associations, essentially whatever stage they need to get on, he helps them. But what I admire the most about him is he's everywhere. Like in my circles, like everybody is, you know, talking about him or with him or around him. And out of everybody I've ever talked to, not a single person has a negative or even lukewarm thing to say about him. They all have such a positive, uh, positive impact from him and, and, and view him in such a high light. I find that truly inspiring because that's, that's truly difficult to do. Um, but it just, it really remarks on his character. Yeah, I guess, and it really is that integrity, and I guess authenticity, really, isn't it? Because you can't bluff that. That just purely is you coming through and shining, which is what connects everybody in that same kind of way with so many people involved. Um, what was the best piece of advice you've ever been given, and, and who gave it to you? Uh, the best piece of advice I was ever given would probably be two pieces. One would be 
don't, especially if I was giving this advice back to my younger self, but, um, it holds true now as well, but don't take time for granted because it passes so quickly. And that's more of a, a kind of a generic one that I've heard many, many people uh, tell me, but my mentors truly have said this, don't take time for granted. You know, it's, it's very, uh, it, it's, it's truly limited and we should cherish it. And then kind of off the side of that, which has been more impactful for me recently in the, in the last year or two is appreciate the small moments. Now I've actually, I just had this conversation with my son too, because it relates to all of us. What happens is we get busy, right? Maybe mm-hmm. you're busy studying, you're busy with sports or you're busy with work, whatever that is. And, um, we actually set goals. We all either, even subconsciously, like, you know, many of us write out our goals or we have visible our goals, but even if you don't do that, you have things you want to accomplish. Maybe it's making JV or varsity, or maybe it's getting an A on this test. So we all have these kind of goals and human nature is once we get to that goal, like we're constantly chasing that goal. Once we achieve it, we push the goal further. Now it becomes I want to get an A on every test or I want to get straight A's or I want to have to be first string on varsity or you know I have to make a certain level of income or whatever that is. And as human nature, what happens, we push harder and harder and harder. We achieve all these goals, but the goals continue to go forward because we're never satisfied with what we've just accomplished. So stopping and, and recognizing when you achieve those, those moments, those goals, no matter how small they are and turning around and looking back and seeing where you've come and appreciating that journey will make a huge difference as far as happiness and gratification in life. And also later on in life, make a huge difference from, from burning out or overwhelm or stress. And I think in, especially for, for younger people listening, you know, the whole feeling of being under pressure and mental health and that kind of thing, I think these are really key points of just realising there's more than just, like you say, the next day, because there'll always be another test and there'll be another thing to study and another thing to do. But actually see where that fits in your life, you know, enjoying time with your loved ones, actually having time to, to play with your friends, you know, and actually, you know, be really engaged and, and pleased with where you are now, because as you just said, the whole thing is a journey, isn't it? There is no end game. So actually, it's only when you have that perspective within yourself, I think, that you can really, really um, enjoy it and actually put it all in perspective. Absolutely, yep. So you just said there about you'd use the same advice for your younger self, but is is there another piece of advice that if you had to just pick one thing which you would just pass down um, looking back from where you are now to your younger younger person, what would that be? Yeah, so that that would be more what I was saying would be more of the inspirational, uh, you know, it works for young or old. Uh, what I would say, like if I was just talking to my younger self, and I was fortunate to have had other people telling me this, which is why I think it played a role in my journey and allowed me, you know, I almost had this naive belief that I could do whatever I want. And I recognize that not everybody has that. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate to have people telling me that to give me that naive belief that (laughs) like I could literally go do whatever I wanted, which allowed me to reach some of the heights I have, which, you know, for example, I've traveled the world. I've taken years off of work and traveled. I've built multi-million dollar companies, things like that. And I never, ever would have done it if I hadn't listened and believed the people that were saying you can do and be whatever you want as long as you're committed to it and make sure it's something that you love. I think that's super important. You can do and be whatever you want as long as you're committed to doing it. And on the back end of that, but make sure it's something you love because I see often people achieve great heights and great, great things. But if they don't love it, they end up burning out or they end up having a little bit less fulfilling life because they're chasing after things uh, that aren't as important. And then if I could I'd also as a sub uh, kind of piece of advice, especially for today's generation, I say this to my son all the time. We actually have what we call a positive social media uh, presence um, campaign. And for, for today's generation, cause I know we didn't have this mark when we were growing up, <laughs> yeah. but remember whatever you say or post online stays online forever. So I always tell them every time you post something on social media or every time somebody tags you on something in social media, his, his goal, his journey is to get into MIT. So I always say, you look at that and ask, what would the MIT advisory board say about that post because unlike you know back in our day we could do silly things and kind of get away with it 
But I see today people can take, they can cherry pick pieces of information for off of the, you know, the internet and they can contort it to look in different ways. So always be aware of what you post or say online stays there forever. Yeah, that really is really good advice. And can I just, just pick a little bit of what you, you said in that, in that answer, um, in terms of doing something you love. I mean, it is so important and I've been lucky enough to been, love the feeling of being a musician and I've traveled the world being a professional musician and, and but the, it's the the work side of it the fact that in this sort of current climate of everything being sort of instant gratification how you sort of can instill that kind of fact that I couldn't have been a professional musician without having put in the you know the 10,000 hour rule in terms of being able to to get from A to B it doesn't just happen overnight there is a certain amount of work that needs to go in and how, how would you sort of sort of advise people to sort of understand that go for what you want but also there is a progress that, that there is a way of getting from a to b which does involve a lot of hard work as well yeah i i really believe it would go back and now that i'm actually diving into this within this conversation with you it's helping me kind of in, internally evaluate like maybe why some of my journey has happened the way it has. Um, I think it kind of goes back to, you know, one of the previous answers I was saying, I, I talked about how I had, I had tried so many different things at a young age, which allowed me to feel and see things that I both enjoyed and didn't enjoy as well as things that I was good at and maybe not so good at. Now I would never say don't choose something because you're not good at it because like you just mentioned with time and practice, you can be the best in the world at it. It, so never use that as a as your primary focus. But also, how could you just choose something if you haven't really sampled everything? And also back to the answer you said, like, how do you know you don't like mushrooms anymore? When's the <laughs> last time you've tried it? So trying more things allows you to have a, a, a wider perspective of what you do enjoy and don't enjoy. And then, you know, we're never going to get it right the very first time. So that's why I say try a lot of things. And as you grow older and as you're doing it more, certain things will uh, will kind of funnel down into what makes the most sense. Like I also – I took piano lessons for, for about eight years when I was growing up. Now I hated it when I was having to do it you know, because I viewed myself as a football player. And what's this football player doing over here playing piano, right? <laughs> but when I went to college, when I went away to college, I remember I was fortunate my dorm that I was at had a piano in the bottom level. And I remember I would get stressed because of all the finals and, and school and being away from family and things like that. I would go down into that bottom level where that piano was and I would just play for an hour or two and it was most the most soothing therapeutic thing I had. And I also remember how people looked at me at that point. They didn't look at me and like tease me. They were like, oh my God, that's incredible that you can play the piano. So had I like just said, nope, I'm not going to do that because that doesn't fit who I, I see myself as, I never would have had that. And still to this day, whenever I'm stressed out, I have a keyboard here in my house, I sit down and play to relax. So I hope that answered your question. I kind of went all over the place. Yeah, that, no, that's but... that, that's absolutely great, and and I think that's key, isn't it? Because we do focus on what we're trying to achieve. You know, what's my goal? What am I studying? Where am I heading? And actually, that breadth of who you are. It's not about everything that you do being, you know, being number one in the world. It's about what actually supports me, and that might only just be, you know having had um, a few piano lessons or, you know, I did a little bit of ski lessons and I've been, you know, I've got the opportunity just to go in and blow off some steam or whatever. I'm never going to be winning an Olympic medal, but actually it's giving me something above and beyond just my, my continual focus of what I've, perceived to be my my number one goal so no I think I think that's really great advice well I'd also if I could throw into there another like uh, like going with this is success like if we're talking now later in life like if we're looking like what can what can I do to be successful right everybody likes interesting people the more interesting you are the easier it is to be likable the easier it is to network with other people and the more opportunities that come your way so the more different things you do, like my background is very, very diverse. Like, you know, piano lessons, football, skiing in the Dolomites, house in Croatia. Like, like it, everything about that allows me to have conversations and tell stories with people. And people love stories. So I would say, as a you know, at a, at a younger age, the more experiences you can you can gather and have, the more. Uh, rounded of a person you'll be, but the more interesting of a person you'll be too. And that will serve you, especially if you make that a part of your journey ongoing, that'll serve you later on in life as, as, along with success as well. 
And I guess that sort of ties in with like you're saying about people looking up to people. You know, they like that authenticity. They they like knowing who you are, and that comes from you just being able to share who you are. And actually, having stories and experiences is a great place to start. It's not about showing them your knowledge. It's about showing them who you are, because that, like we said already on this podcast, it's about connection, and that's how you do connect with people. So. What does your future look like? And in terms of that, not just necessarily where you're going to be living in the next 5, 10, 20 years, but just in terms of what you'd like your life to be and feel as as you head into the future. Yeah, so as, as crazy as it sounds, it'll probably include another doctorate degree I've been looking at, <laughs> potentially uh, taking a, a PhD uh, another PhD program, like, which is amazing in today's day and age. Like there's so many online opportunities that I can do that from just about anywhere. So it'll probably include more education for sure. But I'm also looking to, I have several companies that I'm in the process of building. My goal is within the next year to have those into a place where I can get a little bit more of my freedom back, my travel freedom, because I do greatly enjoy being able to, you know, go away for a couple of weeks or be in a different part of the world as well. That sounds like a, a really, a really important thing, I think, because as soon as you start to feel trapped in anything that you're doing, even if it's something you love, you're always going to start to struggle over time, aren't you? So I think having that freedom is, is just gives you exactly what you said. It makes it all feel like anything's much more achievable. So what podcast, book, film, video, song it has had the biggest impact on, on your life? And I guess it might be a message or a story that you've heard from that, or it might just be a particular time of your life where, where it's something that had a really big impact that, that you can remember and share with us. Yeah, so I actually, um, when I was thinking through this previously, I was originally going to put one of the biggest books that's made an impact to me was the book Good to Great by Jim Collins. But that's more of a business book. And so I don't know if that's the the best one to recommend here. What actually, after having talked with you, you know, for the past 30 minutes or so, what sticks out to me is a book, um, you know, I have my son who's 13 read uh, entrepreneurial or personal development books regularly and, you know, more easy to easy to, uh, to, to kind of consume books, but I like to expand his brain to, uh, to what's possible as well. And one of the, out of surprisingly out of all the books I had given him up to this point, one of the ones he's told me that's made a big, big impression on him, which makes a lot of sense looking back on it. Now it's the book called the dip by Seth Godin. Now this is an entrepreneurial book, but it's very, you know, it's very, uh, consumable. It's like maybe 50 pages, very, you know, small and easy read. And it's about, it's got stories in it, but now thinking on why that makes sense is the dip. The book is about like the, these jour- the journeys we go on and right before great success is typically a period of struggle. And he calls that the dip. And now I hadn't put it or looked at it through the eyes of, for example, a 13 year old, but it makes a lot of sense. Even at that age, even in our younger years, we go through these periods of struggle of, of, you know, maybe sadness or like uh, uncertainty. And if you can look at it from the perspective that this book provides, which is, Hey, this means that you're right about to do, you're right on the, the, the compass of doing something great. And understanding that it's also normal that everybody goes through these little dips and that you're about to go on to this to achieve something that you're wanting to achieve. It makes it much more manageable and um, easier to kind of handle these periods of struggle or difficulty. So honestly, I probably never would have recommended that to kids previously, but after my son explained it to me. I, I definitely recommend that all kids read it because I think it will help them through that journey because as adults, a lot of times we forget that, you know, even kids go through these periods of of difficulties and struggles. And if we can help them understand that it's momentary and, and, and this struggle actually is is creating more character, and more strength for you to be able to achieve more afterwards it gives them something to look forward to on the other side of it as well as looking at the moment what's the lesson like what am i learning right now during this struggle that's going to help me in the future and i really love the fact that you know what this really demonstrates is that we're also learning from the younger generation as well i mean we're here on this podcast you know sharing great insights and great experiences which we're hoping to to pass on to the next generation and here you are 
almost flipping the whole thing down. It's like, I've learned this from my son because of his experience of what he's got out of it and the fact that we can learn from everybody, no matter what their age, and because everyone's got an experience, whether they've been living, like you said, 13 years or, or whether it's 30. And I, I really love the fact that it's, it just opens up everybody's ability to understand that everybody's got something to give. And if you can just spend the time and be in the moment and actually share what it is that you're going through and, and just talk about what you're learning, no matter what the age, we've all got something to give. And I really love that. That's a really great way of, uh, of uh, sort of finishing off our conversation, which has been brilliant. So what's the best way for people to find out more about you? Where can they go and explore even more into your life? Yeah, absolutely. So as I said, I am the co-founder of the American Posture Institute. So you can reach out to me there. Um, I also uh, have a brand called Hustle and Scale, where I help entrepreneurs scale their business. And I have a, uh, you know, I'm on Facebook there as well as Instagram. It's Hustle and Scale. That's brilliant. Lovely. Well, thank you, Mark. I really appreciate you sharing your wisdom and allowing us to learn from all your experiences. It's been my pleasure, Mark. And guys, You can do it. Whatever you have in your mind right now, whatever it is you want to achieve, no matter what you believe at this moment, just understand that you can do and be whatever you want as long as you're committed to it and make sure it's something that you love. Thank you again, Mark. Thanks for listening to the Learning on Fire podcast. For more information, please visit educationonfire.com and follow the links from the homepage. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire.